Hey, what's up guys? So for today's video, I've got Jack. Um, he's actually behind me here because um, he'd rather stay anonymous for this video, but uh, no problems with that. And this is his 2012 Volkswagen Golf. Uh, it's a 2.5 liter base model uh, manual transmission. Uh, Jack, you want to say a few things about the car? Uh, yeah, so I actually got this car because I needed a commuter that could hold a, a lot of cargo space, especially when uh, moving things for manufacturing. Uh, however, I also wanted a, a car that's more performance oriented. Now, most people get the GTI, but this is a lot, uh, a lot within the budget that I needed. So, yeah, that's all. All right, yeah. So this is kind of a car that uh, most people wouldn't typically <laughs> expect to find up in the canyons, but um, I'm actually pretty excited for it because it's one of those cars that you, you know it's an economy car, but at the same time. If you look at it on paper, it you know it's lightweight, uh, it's a manual transmission, and that's really you know, all you need to have fun in the canyons. So yeah, let's take it for a test drive. So um, I've driven a couple of Volkswagen uh, cars before, and so I've I used to actually own a 2011 Audi A3 two liter turbo with a six speed manual, and uh, that car is actually based on the Mark Six Golf GTI, and this is just the base model of the Mark Six. Um, as also my, my one of my housemates and friends owns a uh, Mark 6 GTI and I've driven that as well. Um, so I'm pretty familiar with the whole Mark 6 platform in terms of just the way it drives. Um, I've never driven a base model Golf before but I will say in terms of the, the driver inputs, the steering, the shifter, the clutch, the brake, uh, the throttle response, it all feels very similar. It's all very at home. Um, I had no problems just hopping in this car and just driving it, uh, you know, without grinding the clutch or stalling or anything. So it's a very easy car to drive. The steering is super light. Uh, it is lighter than the Mark 6 GTI that I've driven. So that's one thing that kind of differentiates it. Uh, I'm sure Volkswagen tuned it to be that way to give it a little bit, a little bit more steering feel. Um, the shifter feels almost identical. There's really nothing to differentiate it. Um, and same with the pedals. The, all three pedals feel about the same. Um, the driving position is as you'd expect. It is a little bit higher than a GTI, but honestly you don't really notice the difference. Uh, it is an economy hatchback, and so the driving position is very upright. Um, there's not really much sense of you know being sitting low down in the car it's almost more like I'm sitting on top of the car in a way uh, which is fine because you want to be comfortable you want to have good visibility when you're when you're just driving a, a normal car like this so this Golf has the 2.5 liter naturally aspirated inline four uh, Volkswagen motor uh, it produces about 170 horsepower and a little a little under 180 foot-pounds of torque um, so it does have a very linear power band. It doesn't particularly have a lot of low-end torque or a lot of high-end power, but it feels pretty linear throughout the power band. Um, it's not designed to be a performance motor. It's just, uh, you know, it's designed to be an economy motor that gets, gets good fuel economy and is relatively reliable. And for that, I think it uh, does the job just fine. Um, but in a second here, I'll push it a little faster to see how the engine really performs when it's uh, given full throttle. The other thing that a car like the SI would have over this is uh, the gear ratio. So I notice that every time I'm out of a, say like, a 30 degree hairpin, or even shorter, uh, it's, it's around maybe 3500 for the SI, whereas this one, I could be as low as 2000. Okay. Yeah, the, the gear ratio of this car is pretty, a little bit long, mostly just because it's a five speed. And it's, I'm sure the fifth gear is an overdrive gear tuned for fuel economy, so they definitely geared it a little bit long. Um, but on this tight road, mostly I'll be in second and third gear when I start pushing it, so we'll see how it does.
So uh, during that little quick run back there, the engine feels plenty strong. It doesn't really have much of a top end, um, but if you just keep it in kind of the three to 5,000 RPM range, it's got plenty of torque. Um, so one thing that I don't like about this car, the brake pedal does get kind of soft. It's not because it's necessarily fading, but um, it just doesn't have a lot of bite to it. Um, I'm gonna go out and just guess that it probably just has single piston calipers at the front and rear. Um, so the stopping power requires you to really mash on the pedal and it's a very soft feeling pedal. Um, and that's not really what I experienced when I drove the A3 and the GTI. So I think that's one area where they definitely um, approved upon, improved upon the base car with the GTI. We're just gonna do a quick uh, zero to 60 run from a roll um, and I'll give you an idea of how this engine feels and sounds. So in terms of the engine, my thoughts remain the same as from my first run. Um, it's actually really a really quiet engine, so I, I'm not sure if the sound re even really registers on my GoPro microphone. It's a really soft, kind of muted engine noise. Um, probably could be improved if, with a bit of intake tuning, or an aftermarket intake rather. Um, I don't really know if that's worth it on a car like this. It probably won't gain much power, just a little bit of sound. Um, in the corners, there is a lot of body roll. That's kind of to be expected with a car like this. Um, that's not to say it doesn't have grip. It still feels like, you know, it sticks pretty well in the corners. Um, the shifter feels great. It's easy to heel toe. Um, the throttle response isn't quite as direct as some of the Hondas I've driven, as well as the BRZ that I've uh, recently reviewed. Um, when I shift up, I don't know if it's just because of the way I'm driving it, but when I shift up a gear, the rev, the rev seem to hang a little bit, and so you have to wait an extra second uh, before the revs will, will, will drop down to rev match for you. Yeah, that's not just you. That's, uh, most people who drove this car has the same, uh, has the same feeling. Okay, really? Yeah. yeah, so it's not just me. Yeah, so there's a bit of, uh, I don't want to call it throttle lag, but I just whenever you're, you take your foot off the throttle, um, it, uh, it hangs the revs just a little bit. Another thing uh, worth mentioning about the handling compared to the GTI is that the GTI has either 17 or 18 inch wheels uh, and if I remember correctly wider tires whereas this one has 195 millimeter width and uh, 15 inch uh, diameter and that just makes everything happen a lot more quickly. You know, it's not as a, uh, it doesn't, it wouldn't feel as easily controlled as if they were uh, bigger wheels. Right, the GTI that uh, my housemate has has the 17 inch diameter and I think they're wearing uh, 215 or 225s all around. And then the A A3 that I own had the 18 inch wheels with the 225s all around. Whoa, okay. Okay. Uh, but anyways, yeah, so those cars had a lot more grip just based on pure, you know, mechanical tire grip alone. So I think if this car was upgraded to, you know, some stickier tires, uh, it would feel a little bit more uh, grippy in the corners, but it's still plenty of grip to have fun with in the canyons. Mm -hmm. So in my opinion, if there is one place that I would upgrade on this car, if I was to continue driving it in the canyons, um, is probably the brakes. Um, there's not much I would do to the engine. If anything, there's not anything you really can do to the engine. You can't, you know, add, you know, can't you can't just add an ECU to it and expect no. much power out of it. Um, to be honest, it doesn't really need much more power to have fun. It it really comes down to the brakes for me. Uh, the pedal feel is just a bit too squishy for my liking, and so I find myself braking uh, a lot earlier for corners 
than I did with uh, the previous cars that I've driven, uh, which are obviously a lot more perform performance oriented. So that's not really a knock on this car because it's not really meant for these kinds of driving situations. Um, but if it had a more solid brake feel, honestly this car would be um, pretty fun as a first uh, manual transmission kind of sporty lightweight car. So I think it's in interesting that Jack chose this platform to you know, turn into a fun weekend car besides just being a daily driver. Um, so Jack, uh, well, why exactly did you pick this car and like, how did you get into canyon carving with it? You know, as I mentioned, uh, I also needed a, a good commuting car, you know, good gas mileage, cargo space. But uh, the other cars that were within the same budget would be the Ford Focus, which I, I didn't feel to be uh, as premier in terms of the interior. And the power was not as much as this either. And, and also the driving dynamic. Uh, I kind of preferred this over it. Okay. Now, as for the canyon carving, uh, you know, I'm kind of a cheap ass. So <laughs> the track, I know everyone says take it to the track, but you know, for some people, this is just not possible, you know? And it, where else are you going to, uh, you know, practice your technical driving skill here, you know, to a certain like safe extent. Right. But you mentioned earlier that you ran into a couple of uh, more performance-oriented cars, uh, like a Genesis Coupe 2.0T um, and a couple Integras, and you said you were able to keep up with them just fine, right? Yeah, like this car, it's surprisingly can be competitive. You know, you definitely have to push it more to its limit than the other cars have to. But you know, if you if you get used to the car, you know, do like try to use the throttle for rotation, you know, certain other types of things like trail braking, it would actually be a pretty good car. But that's, uh, that goes for any car really. Yeah, and so I think the, <laughs> if you don't take away anything else from this review, um, I think the moral of the story is you don't need an expensive high horsepower, even necessarily rear wheel drive or all wheel drive car to learn the basics of driving and have fun on a nice twisty road like this. You can buy a base model Golf, uh, a used one will probably go for around 10k I'm, I'm guessing, and uh, you can you can learn heel toe downshifting, you can learn trail braking, uh, you can learn how to manage uh, oversteer, uh, understeer, maybe not oversteer so much in this car, at least not on public roads, that wouldn't be safe, but you know, you get my point. And in fact, I would encourage most uh, beginning auto enthusiasts to start with a car such as this one um, you'll learn the limits of the car a lot faster uh, in a car like this than you would with something like um, say an S2000 um, or a 350Z something along those lines um, those cars obviously are a lot more capable but as a beginning driver you're not going to get up to its limits you know anywhere near as quickly and so this, a car like this will teach you the basics of driving a lot quicker and you'll be able to upgrade to that, to that um, better platform later on once you've, once you've improved your skills. So thanks again, Jack, for uh, bringing out your golf. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, it was an interesting experience. Uh, I was pleasantly surprised by the way this car drives and uh, hopefully in the future we'll have some more cars kind of in this kind of range of economy small lightweight car and uh, we can do some more comparisons between those so as usual guys thanks for watching uh, if you're looking forward to seeing more reviews from me which I've got plenty uh, planned for the coming months uh, please subscribe to my channel and see you next time